Titus, and this is the Armageddon update. Well, we keep getting closer to Armageddon, and nobody seems to care. I mean, this channel, Christopher Titus TV, should have 15 million subscribers by now, but I guess people don't want to know about the world coming to an end because it's all negative and world endy. So instead, let's go play Halo and watch Miss Maisel until the nuclear fire consumes us. <laughs> oh, so much better. Now, a couple of days ago, our president, Sweet Potato Hitler, assassinated the head of the Iranian army. I'm pleased to inform you the American people should be extremely grateful. Now, I'm not saying that the dude didn't deserve to die. I'm just saying... Think it through. If we kill every douchebag on the planet, then we won't know who to hate. We always need to have an apex asshole to know what we are fighting against. I mean, look, Harvey Weinstein is an asshole and has really amped it up with his walking a walker into court thing. I mean, the dude's like a, a Tiny Tim one-act play, except <laughs> with rape. You know, we should drone strike Harvey Weinstein. I mean, if it was open season on everybody who was a murderous a-hole, then we'd have the streets of the world littered in dead a-holes. Leave your old a-holes on the side of the road. We'll pick them up on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Also, your rapists and pedophiles. Sounds like heaven, doesn't it? Here's the problem. With the killing the defense secretary of Iran, besides screwing up traffic horribly with that funeral. If we kill the defense secretary of Iran, then it's open season on the defense secretary of North Korea, South Korea, Iraq, the Bahamas, and South Florida. And we don't do that. As Americans, our job is to always stand above the random monkey base level, hit a douchebag in the head with a rock, stomp his face into the ground. Unless you're at an MMA fight. I mean, be real. God, I wish our president had a bigger penis. We could avoid all of this. You know, we have let countries kill and chop up journalists because they wrote a bad yet honest article. I'm looking at you, bone saw bin Salman. So although the killing of Suleimani Asa Kaka 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 Basra Baja Kaka Makanarian, or whatever the hell his name was, was justified, it may not have been the best judgment call from a man who bankrupt casinos and said out loud in front of television cameras, If Ivanka weren't my daughter, perhaps I'd be dating her. You know, we had a treaty with Iran, and we were working to a place of mutual peace and prosperity. I mean, look, Russia shot down a jetliner, and we did nothing. Russia invaded Crimea. We did nothing, except for sanctions. <laughs> And when has that ever worked in a fight? Yo, man, I'm going to kick your ass. Yeah? Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make it hard for you to get goods and services. Yeah, now what you got? The rules aren't applied evenly on the world stage. It seems as though we are all living in a dark, evil Narnia invented by Willy Wonka and the Cars for Kids psychopaths. 1877 Cars for Kids. And by the way, why do kids need cars? I mean, they can barely wipe their own asses, let alone drive. Frankly, I don't get it. But the reality about Iran is we had a nuclear deal. Trump's own people said they were following it. We pulled out of the deal. Then they shot down a drone. And then we assassinated their defense secretary. So I believe we skipped a few levels. Now, right or wrong, we are this much closer to a species extincting, planet-killing world war than we have ever been since Ronald Reagan said on the radio, I've signed legislation that will outlaw Russia forever. <laughs> we begin bombing in five minutes. And you know why? It's all because of the Electoral College. <sighs> Thank you, rural America with no people or book learning. Namaste. I know, look it up. I'm Christopher Titus, and this is the Armageddon Update. <sighs> I think I mispronounced the dude's name. Hey everybody, Christopher Titus, Titus Podcast. Uh, thanks for tuning in today. I do want to talk to you about uh, something. Uh, with me, my host, as always, Rachel Bradley. Oh, I'm sorry, that's Zach Ward. Wow. Actually, Rachel has the flu and is out. To the, to, she has the flu to the point where she went to the doctor yesterday and the doctor said, you have the flu, don't go do anything tomorrow. So I didn't want to get anybody sick, uh, although I slept with her last night, so um, it, just don't shake my hand. Okay. Uh, as, uh, as a guest, we have someone who's one of my favorite people in show business that I've ever met. Actually, one of my p favorite people on the planet. A man who walks it like he talks it. Uh, he's, a, he's an amazing uh, writer, uh, philanthropist, can I say? No, you can't. <laughs> Not say. <laughs> Mr. Patrick Megan, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, Yay! This is very kind of yeah. you. Hi. No, you don't even know, man. You don't even know. We there's a there's 
there's a few people I remember from the show. I really remember it because they made an impact on how I write and they made an impact on um, from the how show? I act. Yes. Do you, remember, do you remember oh, Stacy Keach? Uh, big head. Yeah. Loud. Yeah. yeah. Oh, really nice. Yeah. yeah. He was Acti- good. He was very, really kind of actory. Oh, kind of yeah. actory. I thought he was Got really high on set a lot. He did. <laughs> <laughs> Only when David Carradine was there. Did no, he really? No, no. Oh, okay, yeah. already Jeez. we're already jumping into it. Was Stacy Keach like getting high? He got me so high. <laughs> he got you high. He got. He me was like so not only was he high. consuming Guys, drugs for those of you, himself. I this had is a so show. Crazy, like oh, we're already doing this. Yeah, we're at the twenty year anniversary of Titus. By the way, I brought P- Patrick on That's for this right. for this reason, and uh, uh, and also I think he's one of the best people on the planet. But uh, so Zach and I and Patrick are going to talk about that, and then we're going to go into talk about Family Guy. But I want I just want I want to let people who don't know, I had a TV show yeah. two decades ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Stacy Keach, like years before that, Stacy Keach played your dad, right? right? And so years before that, had gotten busted for coke in England. In, in England, did, did, did time. time, did prison time for that, and then and that was like, like the eighties. That like, like sure, the- that's so long ago. So now he's the new clean, you know, all about business, just wants to work. Stacy Keach, getting you high. Yeah. Okay. So when did this happen? This happened in the in the so dressing rooms. Did you know, by the way? Were you uh, like, oh, I, I vaguely, oh, probably doing drugs with Zach. Years Ward. later, well, they, but Zach's eyes are so uh, slanty, slanty so anyway, <laughs> so tranty that 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 you just you. never knew when he was high. Yeah. You just okay. never, so I, if Zach could come in high now, and I'd be like, it just looks like Zach. Right. Maybe and he's also, just always- everybody back then thought I did cocaine because my nose had been broken so many times that okay. I couldn't breathe through it. Sure. But I never did cocaine. Okay. I was like, hey guys, <clears throat> good to see you. And they're like, uh, Zach on the coke. Zach, yeah. But Zach didn't do coke. No. Zach, no do coke. No. So uh, Zach would go over to Stacy Keach's room because Stacy, who was next door to me, yeah. was the only person who was allowed to smoke inside. So he's I, Stacey Keach. Because he's Stacy fucking Keach. Yeah. So I go over there. He didn't and, care. He didn't care. And no one was going to be like, Mr. Keach. <laughs> so I went over and he'd be playing music on his on his keyboards because he's a jazz pianist and he's amazing. And he's like, yeah, here, you want to have a smoke? I'm like, I have my own. He goes, not like this, you don't. <laughs> and I, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> And I say, I take a hit of it. I'm like, oh, that's uh, that's weed. Um, and I'm trying to be like pals with Stacey Keach. Sure. And the thing is, I'm not a day drinker or a day smoker. Yeah. It's never been my thing. So yeah. you're back in fifth grade, sixth grade with the weird kid. Dude. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I'm like the grade kid five kid. Ki- <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The- yeah. I mean, I'm hanging out with the a cool god. Yeah. yeah. So uh, then we're shooting interstitials that day when the show was big, popular, and the right. studio was behind us. Sure, yeah. So, so we're that, going like, three week, that three week the, period yeah. before it all went For, down. Year one, uh, year, <laughs> year one, two. Year actually one. It was year two. No, year one was awesome. Uh, and then, so I had to go on a stage. We're shooting interstitials, and for the people at home, that's like these tiny little commercials that connect a night of television. So you're watching. Let's come up with another show. Um, Malcolm, Malcolm in the in Middle, the middle. Yeah. and then there's an interstitial tiny commercial that's stuffed with the, uh, people from Titus, right. right? And then at the end of it, it's like, Titus coming up uh-huh. after this show yeah. on Fox. Yeah. And you do a bunch of those. So those are interstitials. So I go down to stage. Nobody says that word anymore, but go oh, ahead. they don't? Okay, they call them bumps. I don't know. Anyway, so I go down there, and now the weed hits me in the head, bro. And I'm standing there, and I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, I'm so fucking high, and super paranoid about it. <laughs> because again, as everybody knows, Dale I have Berman small eyes, tell. and I'm like, oh my God. And see. someone's like, hey, Zach, you good? I'm like, allergies. Are you on allergies? I, was, and like, okay. I remember this day. Stacy Keach walks by. Stacy had glasses that yeah. were rose colored, right. and I learned why. <laughs> and I, because of this reason, and I turned to him. I said, "Hey, Stacy, 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 do I look high?" And he goes, "Oh, fuck yeah!" I said, "What did you do to me?" He goes, "You can't take the heat, son." Get out of the kitchen <laughs> and just walks and wow. leaves me to my own machinations. And I'm just trying not to shit my pants. People are like, hey, you ready to go, Zach? I mean, I didn't do it. I mean, yes. <laughs> that was like, he's like a Bond villain. That he Dude, it was this. amazing. This is, this is give so him a great. cat. I've already learned so much about Titus and I was well, there. You don't know that yeah. the week, uh, the couple weeks, David Carradine for a couple weeks and the, the, the Christmas episode. That's with- not a shocker. Yeah, but yeah. Keach went, uh, whatever happened between right. those Even guys on being Kill buddies. Bill, he sort of looks <laughs> like, you were always my favorite was, Uma. But Keach and those guys, I mean, together, it was it was like having the the psycho brother from jail coming in because yeah. Keach got out of Because by the end of the week, Keach was fucking high all the time. Yeah. And they were giggling like two little right. children. Yeah. And, and uh, like, oh, we need to write this character out of the show. We need to kill <laughs> yeah, him off. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, we need, no, I think we have a meeting in the writers' room. Oh, we, David Carradine can't come back anymore. You're like, why? He was hilarious. He's yeah, we, we almost lost Stacy this but, week. Okay, we need to explain to everybody <laughs> that on the show Titus, you created the show with Jack Kenny and Brian Hargrove, and then I was one of the actors who got hired to be part of the cast. Yeah. But for those of you at home who don't work on TV series, there's a whole room filled with writers who are talented people that are breaking story and building story, and this man was one of them. So. I was one of them, yeah. But there's no, like no, no, not just that. You were the first one of them. Let's be very clear really? who you are. Oh, you yeah, don't know. know. So Jack, Brian, and I, uh, we both wrote. We, we all, Dave J wrote one version of the Titus, and I wrote a version of the Titus, and then we and we ended up. They ended up. That's how I became EP. They took it to the network and said, "He's a good writer. Let's make him EP." Yeah. Then we had to hire a writer's assistant. Well, Patrick wasn't a writer. He was a writer's assistant. Very funny. Kay so came in, and Patrick was. Is that good? You were, dude. Do you remember doing this? So we would be in the room pitching. This was during the pilot, right? You were on the pilot. I was. Well, well, I was a PA and that, on the pilot, and then sometimes no the kidding. person who was writer's assistant would have to, you'd like bump them out because you'd have to go, whatever. And they, they weren't, I don't remember. And you'd be like, they were like, all right, even, Megan, get in here. And you just, I'd just be typing. Except, shit. so here's what Megan did. Here's why he got bumped up. And this is why now he's an executive producer on Family Guy. So he'd be typing. We'd be and Jack walking around the room, just pitching, yelling, trying to get stuff and making funny. And Patrick would, would, he would put it in. And then sometimes he would stop and he'd go, do you really want me to put that in? <laughs> and, I was like, and, and at first I was like, yeah, fucking put it in. And then up at the third time we did, I realized, oh, Patrick has a really good sense of humor. I'm not funny. <laughs> no, that's 100% not the case. But, but no, you knew what was funny and what wasn't. And there's only one time in the entire run of Titus, the only time. one time. I, you, you, yeah. you, I don't you, remember the specific joke, though. I, no, just I don't remember, remember going to fucking bat for the joke. Dude, you were, you were, you were and, and calling this shot. I specific, and it wasn't my joke, by the way. Like, I would feel like more of an asshole. This it was like, your joke. I, no, I'm telling you it wasn't. So... <laughs> If what we're thinking of is the same thing. So Titus was like down on the stage, right? And the writer's room was, you know, writing stuff. And I'm pretty sure I was the writer's assistant at that point. So this was not my joke. But uh, but uh, you come back in like off the stage. And you're like, okay, you know, Zach's got some good stuff. And like David's working out this bit. And blah, blah, blah. What do we got here, right? And because, you know, the room has to keep going while they're going down on the stage yeah. and stuff. So Titus... Christopher Titus himself, the human being, is bouncing back and forth between the stage and then back up and then back down. And well, because I could see uh, the cool thing for that, which a lot of shows don't have, is that because I was in both places, yeah. I could be on the set with you. And when you would shit the bed with a joke, I, I you're so funny. I knew it wasn't this you. Joke, it right. wasn't you usually. Well, There's it was you. The page. First, we need to go back up. Yeah, there but first rehearsal, it was always him. Second or third uh -huh. rehearsal, because first rehearsal, he was like, because he would do this. He would go. He would pick the crazy. He's an actor. He would pick this craziest fucking interpretation, and we'd all look at him like, the "Fuck, you doing?" And then by the second take you fucking wouldn't find the joke but you what you played i'm i'm a yeah, comedian yeah. so i'm like let me be uh, wooden and cardboard and do it exactly you're like, like jack, you're like jack lemon <laughs> i'm walter mathau uh, walter mathau walter mathau, Not, like, mathau. Canada, Everybody just we played say it the other way the pronunciation <laughs> walter canada, mathau. so uh so you come up into the room and we're like ah oh, just wait till chris sees this joke that just got that we wrote and like you sit down and you're looking right at the screen and i'm like okay he's working his way down he's gonna get to this hilarious fucking joke and just the face just sort of stays the same throughout and um and this, I'm positive, is what you're remembering. <laughs> like, I'm looking at you and I'm waiting for you to sort of say, oh, yeah, OK, good that we're going to do that. But that's not what you say. And you just say nothing. And finally, I say, it's funny. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I, I remember like, they turned to me and like right away I realized like, oh shit, I make $7 an hour and that's not my job is to tell Christopher Titus what to do. And I was like, but, I mean, if you, and you were like, no, 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 no. All right. Yeah. Put it in. We're doing this fucking joke. We're doing this fucking joke. And I'm coming to you <laughs> and I'm coming to you when it doesn't work because it's not going to work, but I'm going to sell the fuck out of it. <laughs> but it's not going to work. And I'm coming straight to you. Megan. That wasn't that hard. I was, and you're going you're gonna to say some shit to me. You just brought, you just brought this and and we, and, and we went down the stage and it got in it got in we went in you, you were true to your word uh -huh. and you sold the fuck out of it not a fucking peep nothing not only did i sell it, it we sold it it died so hard Wait. and you came right off the stage like like girl, audience you came around like, where's megan <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, here's what i remember you we put it in in like day three on the second rehearsal and i was like and and i said i don't think it's gonna work and you went and you and you mother you doubled down dude you you were like nope that's funny. We're doing. It. I'm like Pat. I, it really was I, not my joke. I, I promise I go, Pat, you that. I, well, you, well, whoever you, I were, wouldn't have gone to bat for my own joke. Like you, that. you again, like Babe Ruth calling the shot. You were like this fucking home okay. run, and and you kept doing it. And I went, I went, okay. You know why? Because I thought 
you are you're, you're so you're you're a you're a ninety nine point nine percenter, dude. No. This, yes, no, you are. This was not. I'm okay. So you really don't remember this. This was not. No, I remember, like. Oh, I have faith in Patrick because he. No, no, you cut. He, no, 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 no. This was one hundred percent. I'm shoving this turd yeah, right you, down yes. his throat. <laughs> yeah, you did. You did. You're like, take this turd and make it funny. And I was like, all right, I'm taking the turd. So we rehearse it with Zach. We rehearse it, and I keep going. To you, I go, I go, try it. I go, Pat, what do you think? And I, am I, I said, am I doing it wrong? And you go, no, just keep doing it. And when the audience is here, it's gonna kill. First pass, fucking, and fucking, and nothing. And in my head, because me and I always said that. I, I remember thinking, fucking didn't work. And, and I, and I was working. I was you hard. Were, no, and I, I, and no I sell. I forget the joke. I sell. I sell a joke. I walk up. And I did go, Megan. And I go, and you go, and he goes, you don't remember what you said. You go, I told you that wouldn't work. You're so fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> he got. I told you work, and I went motherfucker, and then we burst out laughing, and we That's had a better. Funny. We had another joke. You're funny. You were funny, dude, all the time. Oh, so Titus right. was. So uh, Titus got canceled. I've taken the. Uh, he doesn't want to talk about it ever again. Uh, huh. I've taken the uh, the the heat for Titus getting canceled because I got an argument with Gail Berman. The stories I've heard since. Okay. Uh, about me. Okay. Are fucking crazy. Okay. Uh, I had I had a, a. What's one of the stories that you? I had a wardrobe you? person say. No, that, I never had. I, I had I had a wardrobe person say that I picked up a chair and threw it at Gail Berman. Yeah, I heard that one too. I heard. I also heard that one. I that is sort of legend. I don't know if it's true, but it's one of those like never happened. Are you fucking it's one crazy? Of those print the legend things. Yeah, never fucking good, right? happened. It is good. It, uh, but it was believable knowing you. No, if I picked up a chair and threw it at somebody, that never happened. What's a better story though? Like, what do you want like on your tombstone? Like, uh, I didn't really sort of like mesh with the lead in or threw a chair at Gail Berman. Like, yeah, exactly. I don't care which one's true. I know which angry one I about want. angry about yeah. the Birdie Mac show taking our format or yeah, right. <laughs> threw a right. chair. No, no, no. I, I didn't. Okay, so the whole thing with that was I didn't. Or just I, sort of like, oh, uh, Cynthia Watros got a better contract from Lost, and you were like, ah, we had a good run. Or through a chair. Uh, through, uh, what did I? What did I do? I mean, I, I'm trying to think what I did. I told I, I, I didn't want to hire uh, Faye Dunaway. That was I got she in a big argument with everybody. But. But I try. I, I tried to get that happening. Were you in that meeting when I was like, "Guys, are you can take the heat for this," because everybody came to me. The whole crew came to me. And was like, "I'm not working with Fade Dunaway," and they were giving me cards of other. Here, here's another camera crew. Here's another wardrobe. That week, she's here. I want you to the sound guy. I want. I want you to use this guy. Don't. I'm not gonna be here. Yeah. I've worked with you before, and I was like, and so I went to Jack and Ryan. I'm like, guys, we can't hire this person. Right. I, and, and I go, like, it's Fade Dunaway. They kept saying it's Fade yeah. Dunaway, and then Jack started it's calling like her gay royalty, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Jack started calling her Dunn Fade Away. He started calling her <laughs> Dunn Fade Away. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that. Nice. It wasn't she's nice. dead now, right? So we, I guess we can yeah, say she's that. Not she's, she's not dead. She's not dead. Didn't she die? She's oh, not dead. Right, not dead. Uh, but right. what are you going to do? Uh, yeah, yeah. So so what happens was I, I went to the crew. You got to remember, when, and Ty, he knows this. You know this. We had a crew that rebuilt a new show every week. It wasn't yeah. Cheers. We didn't just roll the bar in and shoot. Yeah, yeah. We had the car set. That was it. But the way we wrote it was, which was really hard. You do, yeah. do Like you said, writing that show, even for me, like when everyone kind of whines about like how they shoot a sitcom, I'm like, Fuckers, we did a new yeah. set in a new show in one space as a play yeah. every week. Yeah. What are you bitching about? You, and so uh, so we did that. And but that, that I think this is whatever. But I think that gave the show an energy that really comes off the screen. Even now, even popping in fucking old Isn't DVDs weird? or whatever. Like, it, Yeah, it's weird. But like, there's an energy that comes off it. Yeah. That, like if you're watching an old, I don't even know what was on that same time, Union Square or something, no. right? You're not like, wow, this fucking, <laughs> this Caroline in the City pops. <laughs> exactly. you know, that's but a, like there's an energy to it that I leader, think it's yeah. 100%, not 100%, a large percentage a function of the way you guys did it down on the stage. We had to, man. We uh, And I, because uh, well, because my my ignorance about television is what helped for that. Because I told, I go, wait, when Jack and Brian told me how they shot sitcoms, I was like, what? I know. Why do we wait? We shoot the same. And have scene? you gone? Have you gone to other sitcoms? Like, yeah, I can't. It's, it's, it's the worst. You can't hang through it. I'll never. If I'm lucky enough uh, to get another one where I get to do it, I, I will know. Well, I'm gonna say no, no. We're gonna all learn it like a play every week again, yeah. and the actors are gonna hate me, but I'm like, but I'm gonna be. You know, we're doing it because it. it, it what ended up happening is, do you guys know what the do you know what the box set of the show still goes for on a eBay? No, 160 bucks. That's ridiculous. Box set for season one. Season one, yeah. Season if two. If you can find all season three together, is, they go. For like close to a thousand dollars. Well, at times three hundred fifty, but 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 uh, but season two, three is like the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah. I've been in line, like I've signed stuff out of your comedy shows, uh -huh. and people have season three, and you'll see people in line. I go, "Hey man, what the fuck did you get that?" Uh -huh. like, oh, oh, there's gonna be a fight in the alley after this. That's hilarious. <laughs> so okay, so I want to hear a little bit more about that process from your point of view, though, right? So you had worked on shows, and now we're gonna find were... out what Titus was really no, like. No, 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 no. 
no, on no, Titus. No, no, I'm just talking right now. I'm just Zach, talking about the uh, the um, the sort of like sequential process of like actually shooting it, sort of like straight through like a play. Like you obviously had worked on shit that was 100 percent not that, and then you come to do this. Like, were you yeah. like, all right, fucking let's do it, or so were you like, this ways, is not how it's done? Uh, um, I, I had done a couple of sitcoms before that, pilots and uh, guest stars on other sitcoms. Yeah, and it was um, it felt dead. Yeah. It was very difficult. Uh, it felt very forced. Um, you didn't feel connected to the comedy. You didn't feel d- d- uh, connected to the visceral moment of what was happening. And and literally every episode of Titus felt like a, a dumpster fire. Yeah. Like something <laughs> bad was happening. Yeah. And you need to fucking escape for your life. <laughs> right. Beating back the raccoons yeah. as you run for the exit. Yeah. Right. Like, and that gave it a lot of energy. Like, it wasn't just like, oh, let's talk about this one thing. Wah, wah. We were all it doing was, stunts, and that, like it was. It, but the it, there was so a drive to it. it. It was a it was a race to the finish because this bad thing was happening. And whatever manifests. <laughs> it wasn't right. a bad thing. No, no. I mean, no, like, the story. But the like, story. Yeah. Oh yeah, we laughed. Story. Like, yeah, yeah. But it's, somebody it, kills herself. But ah, it, that's hilarious. It's, that's an episode right there. Right. <laughs> right. But was, like somehow was, that's what we had to. Or do. Did, which PS, by the way, was like. A total fucking cheat card that you used again and again. I saw it with my own eyes where like you would go into Fox, whether it's the studio, the network. I'm like, okay, so here's our pitch for the next like episode. You know, uh, mom kills herself. Right. And people will be like, okay, this is a sitcom, right? You're like, yeah, no, it's hilarious. Mom kills herself. And they would be like, I don't think we could. I don't I don't really think so. And you'd be like, hey. It actually happened. And for whatever reason, they'd be like, oh, oh, okay. Well, well like, now there that's was, hilarious. There was, no, there, there was never like a response from them to that other than, oh, well, then I guess we have to green light this episode. Only and because I'm, like, I'm going to that's I'm going to use that. Everything I ever pitch in my life. Somebody's going to say no, because that's what Hollywood well, is. is people say no, fam- and I'm be like, hey. It actually happened. So is that? I heard no, that's what never, you did with Family Guy when they had the chicken that Peter's always in a fight with. You're like, hey, I got in a fight it, with, with the with chicken. The giant chicken with the giant to give chicken. Me a bad coupon. Yeah, and, and like, I fought right, it well, we over will. a plane, and that really happened. <laughs> so, 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 but here's the thing, you guys, because of that, we had our track record. You, you we could do that because we, we did the pilot was called Dad is Dead. Yeah, where we yeah. talked about a dead guy. We did this one of the harshest jokes to that point on television about the suicide. Who won the pool? Do you remember that? Yeah, he died. So we did. We we was harsh it was so we'd already shown but, them we'd already shown them that we could do it and then we did the intervention episode right where we got dad we had a family intervention uh to get, to get to start dig him to start drinking yeah. and now the hardest part of the show was to go to the network and go okay here's what we're doing now and yeah. you would just see them go right. the network would go um how is that funny exactly right. it really happened and, okay <laughs> yeah and then the second hardest part of the show by the way from my point of view uh would be the very end after the show is shot and you would speak to the studio audience which you're not seeing on the dvd and like then you're like dad stand up all right all my alcoholic dad and we just did like an <laughs> entire act about him shitting his pants in church there he is like take a bow right <laughs> be like somebody would be like dad would be like and I would right? go, and like, I, I, oh, my niece, <laughs> my niece got touched by her lacrosse coach. We just did that hilarious episode. There. She's right here, <laughs> and she did. And she did a little surprise. There's the lacrosse coach. <laughs> he, he like. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, oh man, but uh, it's I'm working on Titus. But my family was so screwed up that they were just like that. My dad, I would go. I, I remember I, there's times when I'd, I'd be there talking to the audience after we've done film, and I'd go, I go, there's my dad right there, and uh, and I go, Dad, it happened just like that. Then he goes, No, not exactly. <laughs> he would just heckle me. He would heckle me from the audience. But you guys were when you guys did the the, the show, you guys. Uh, without you guys being able to you guys trusted me the only time i can ever remember getting in a fight with chris sheridan it was about the tommy's not gay episode mm-hmm. about matthew shepherd and that was we had like a screaming match in the writer's room yeah because sheridan sheridan who was like he's still an fucking he's one of the most brilliant writers yeah. i think in, in hollywood ever yeah he just was like we can't do this it's too far yeah and I was like, no, we're doing it's my it. my favorite episode of all time. I know, but, he, but Chris, you know, I, you have to take Chris's. And I said, no, nope, this is the right way. We've earned it. That's what you said earlier when you were talking. You said we've well, all the jokes that we laid out, we we tried to write a joke every two sentences. We really yeah. did. We yeah. really yeah. bust. 
And so that's how we earned in that three quarter point. That's how we earned that moment of like, holy shit, where the where we just brought it to a screeching halt and scared the hell out of everybody. Right. Uh, that's how we earned that. This has made a lot of episodes very scary. Like generally speaking, in the, <laughs> I'm serious. Like generally speaking, in the story breaking, we'd be like, okay, you know, we would have definitely the core of a story from your real life, right? But then you'd be like, all right, you know, we need to sort of flesh this out. We need to kind of give it some shape and like, oh, maybe this, no, maybe this, that. And we just sort of say maybe this until somebody finally says something thing that like scares you and you're like oh fuck that's that would make me very uncomfortable to watch on television right and nine times out of ten be like oh well that's, that's what we're that's doing i'd go that's what we're doing yeah it, it, we can't do yeah and that also must have been a perfect uh, environment for you to go from that into uh family guy because you like you said building new sets all the time yes and really you guys wrote stuff on titus that was okay for cartoons but not okay for live action which is bizarre yeah but the there's that the, weird the dynamic episode, the road rage episode with the guns like yeah, just, I, just, I watched it recently i was like wow we did this in like we did this in 2000 holy right. shit i know there was like a hyper reality to titus that yeah. like allows you to get away with like putting characters in situations that if you were putting ross and rachel there you'd be like what the fuck am i watching <laughs> i don't I, can you some, imagine replacing some, what if we did a deep fake episode of an old titus episode <laughs> and replaced them with the friends it would just be it would be a horror film yeah. you'd be like oh they're gonna die. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're, they couldn't Absolutely. survive that world. Like, they could it's not. Funny. They could not. But you're just you're sort of you're used to like that's their element. And yeah, in cartoons, like with an animated character, obviously you can do stuff to that person that you would not ordinarily do. Like honestly, like when I watch a sitcom, you know. I don't watch many sitcoms at all, but when right. I, this is honestly neither the here one nor there, but, but when, when they do like a, like a, like a fat guy joke, right? Like my brain just sort of goes to like, okay, there was a casting director who had to be like, yep. okay, right. All right. Bring me the fattest fat guys you can find. And I want to looks find, pathetic and sad right, that we can exactly, laugh at. Who, right. I need and funny so fat. His, I need funny fat now. Bucks, some guy like comes in like, all not be, like bugly over there. Right? That means butt ugly and fat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And like, I, I feel bad. I feel so bad. I can't. I feel bad for I him. can't. I can't just sort of watch the joke. Like all I can think of is the character with the an animated yeah. show. For the point, the human being. Yeah. With an animated show, I'm like, all right, there's no sort uh, of fat like, people are funny, Peter. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, like exactly. Peter, you can make Peter just as fat as you want and not feel like okay, but that's a real human he's being, and diabetes. he's going to go home he's and leave his kids. Exactly. His, his, his <laughs> children it's, are going to grow up without a father, <laughs> right? and it's like, on film forever yeah, like, yeah, like exactly. they'll rerun it yeah <laughs> he'll yeah. always be yeah, so. i lost all the weight but they're still running that fucking episode yes yeah. but i was i was also i was saying to titus like just before we started that um because it titus was so joke heavy it was really for me it was really uh like boot camp for writing for family I guy bet. because that joke that show is also incredibly joke heavy and yep. like i've written you know scripts for other shows or whatever where it's like you write a joke and it's like okay we can take a little we just that's a pretty decent joke we just did like we just earned about a page and a half of resetting the characters you guys had three and like, or four a page uh, uh, yeah no absolutely and and if you would feel the difference if you don't get it and you'd have to in editing you have to we need to pull all this air out and like at at family guy it's like you're off on script and you get a joke you immediately got to think of the next joke and immediately i think of the next joke it's like i was saying to christopher it's like fucking storming omaha beach <laughs> yeah. and just yeah. inch by inch of sand and like oh there goes a story editor no time you know, i remember uh, when i I, used to, I would walk by the writer's room the and back screener. back in the day <laughs> I, I acted and I didn't do anything else. I was I I wasn't directing or producing or writing like I do now. Yeah. So this is twenty years ago, and I would walk by the writers' room and this amazing energy was going on there and lots of arguments and screaming at each other, but with a love and excitement because you're doing it for a reason. And yeah. that thing, like yeah, uh, that thing or maybe something good that was. Really <laughs> and that was I would and then somebody yeah. else was like, ooh, I like I like the second pitch. There's yeah. something yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. So it, I listening to that, I got so excited to want to learn how to write, and I started trying to pitch ideas. And in the first season, it was like blah blah blah. Uh, what's that, Zach? Yeah, shut the fuck up. Okay, <laughs> go act. I'm like, okay. Second season, it was like, what's that, Zach? Uh, no, shut the fuck up, uh, but I'll tell you why. Okay. I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> and that's why I was like, really? I get to learn? Someone was like, that's a nonlinear, it's a nonlinear joke. I was like, what do you mean? She's like, the, the scene is going like this, and your joke goes this way. It doesn't deliver us to the next point. Uh -huh. It just goes off on its own fucking tangent. Oh, you yeah, it's nonlinear. You and I was like, oh, so if I made a, if there was a joke that connected this to this and kept on driving the story, it would be fine. Yes. Next season, I may I got one joke in the show. I got one joke, and I was so fucking proud. It's the best I can't remember what it was, but I it was there on stage, and I was like, 
I made it. It's the best. I have in the reached world. Hollywood gold. I it was a great the very first joke that I got on Titus, uh, and uh, and it's burned in my brain. It was um, uh, it was an outro on the second episode that ended up being the first episode because they ran the pilot second. Uh, which is pudding. Like this, sex with pudding. Sex with pudding. Yeah, yeah exactly. And there's Our, which was actually the fourth episode we shot. Oh, is that right? Yeah. So there was an opening monologue about uh, we come into the world like innocent and pure and yeah. blah blah blah, and I had pitched something about um uh uh we come into the world whatever innocent and pure you know so what we also come in the world like covered in blood and goo and nobody yeah. gets nostalgic <laughs> about that uh yeah, it may have been... i remember this yes oh no no no, no, no. Oh, all right and then you meet our parents and then you meet your parents yeah yeah but all right it may not have been that joke all right it no, may be it was a, a callback I, I it, was a different joke. it was two anyway pieces. the point is like i looked up and fucking david hyde pierce we're never getting that time back by the way you just did go ahead all right david hyde pierce <laughs> it like kicks his head back and laughs and i'm like holy shit i just made nile neck cool yeah crane laugh cool. like he, i don't think he was being polite like he just laughed at something that like i pitched he's got no idea i pitched it right right it's like i'm gonna remember this for the rest of my life and that's I still awesome do. that's like, cool yeah well so the, the show i'll was... be on i'll be like on my deathbed i'll be like i made niles laugh and they'll be like i don't know <laughs> it's on your head, head, head yeah. Yeah. headstone yeah. made niles yeah. crane laugh yeah, exactly. who's niles crane david Hyper. <laughs> uh so uh uh I just want to say thanks, man, for being on the show. Uh, we're going to do and this this year. This is our, our tenth season of the podcast. What we're going to do is this year, next, over the next few months, we're going to have everybody on slowly uh, from the show because I want to just. Oh, you know, yeah. talk oh about. wow! I just you know it was such a it, it, it's the best time of my Will life. Will Jack Kenny? No, oh, uh, right. it, it's the best. It's the best of times is the worst of times because the best of times was I get to work with you guys and it was I remember when it was when it was cooking it was the most fun. Yeah, it was like, cool. Like fifteen hours went by like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then I'd go back in the rise room to midnight with you guys, and it still went by like that. Then I go to my ex wife, and that time to the next day was four days yeah. at least. And then I'd come back, and then my weekends were brutal. But you guys, it was such an amazing time. I burned myself out on the show. I've never yeah. worked that hard in my life. And I, I think I'm not. I think that. you also didn't have the support. Like, um, that was my ex wife that when I was with, on Titus. Yeah. And I got married last year again. Congratulations. Thank you. She's uh, awesome, by the she's way. She's awesome. She's awesome. But she's way, she, we're I, both way out of our leagues. Yeah. Uh, but she's not. I would a, agree, but I've never met her. She could be she's lovely. Shit. I would have no but idea. she's she, not. She, I got but she's, a, she's not a, she's, she's a smart woman. She's not, when I say she's not a civilian, she doesn't do excuse me, nine to five. And then, you know, I'm going to do whatever for the weekend. Yeah. She does. She's a director of events for these venues, meaning that she understands, want to get this done. I've got a passion about this project. I want to make this thing happen. And it's got a window. Yeah. So she's that person that I can turn to and be like, sweetheart, I'll talk to you in three days. I'm writing. Even though I'm running on the back deck, uh -huh. four o'clock. She, she, she gets it. She gets it. Four o'clock yeah. in the morning. She's like, sandwich i'm like no thank you i love you love you too bye and so there's a support to That's it awesome. for each other yeah. and especially with what you went through like i think my my understanding of who you were at that time was very different because i was isolated as an actor all i did was act now i produce and i write and i direct movies and i've done a movie that i produced directed and acted in fuck all that <laughs> that sucks yeah. sucks yeah. and so i love the pro i'd actually of course the process but yeah. the jumping back and forth and yeah. being that person who has to do that acting job and being compartmentalizing that at the same time you only get two hours of sleep when you're shooting an indie feature yeah. film yeah. right and so, so over the years you've come to realize that i'm the I'm, difference I'm a, of it I'm, I'm a genius and more like william wallace william saying. wallace of comedy no, sure in some ways because i because i was doing all of it and helping i didn't feel and, like she was I, going no, anywhere that's, that's, not, that's, not, that's I what i heard i heard you we know that's what you heard we all know that's what you heard we're very familiar with that the only doubt is whether that's what he said yeah not saying that thank you he was hinting you were hinting was i because let's review the tape shall we uh but my point is like looking back on it like especially you were young i'm gonna take starting something positive writer. from it uh, no i'm not done so <laughs> you were take, you were starting off right it gets very negative for, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's going, it goes down a dark place it's like batman with the bats but my point is like ha having a perspective towards the process you were going through now especially for you back then you were stand up you hadn't done any fucking you didn't know you didn't know the business you weren't like me you didn't have my experience at that time yeah. in front of camera you walked into that Bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, blind as fuck, with a lot of hope in your eyes, and not a lot of experience on that that process. No, being in front of the camera, writing, Dude. Was, writing, and jokes and funny and story. That, I and had, then but, the boy, balancing yeah. and directing and EP and all that. Doing. It really was like 
my hat's off to you as to how long you didn't fuck it up for. Because in the sense <laughs> Thank that, you. Look, Thank Mike, you. first guy to ever say that, <laughs> the guy who created Mike and Molly, huge show. Yeah, he got kicked off his fucking show. Yeah. As an EP, yeah. and apparently uh, that's not uncommon. Right. You create the show, you you're on the, the first size season. Of furniture he had to throw? Because <laughs> you know, chair, you it can do. It didn't happen. <laughs> Couch, a little bit more difficult. <laughs> what else? We could only afford Other a chair. Other stories I heard. I heard, I heard. I heard another story that I punched a PA, and I was like, well, first of all, that never happened. executive, maybe. I go, I go <laughs> no. maybe. I go, the no, people, that worked, not, people that worked on the show were the fucking the yeah, shit. Yeah, I respected yeah. them. Uh, you, the only time I ever, we had a guy. Remember that guy? Uh, we people, you guys understand how this works, and I, I don't know how it works on Family Guy. Do you have to pitch stories to current people, or is it is it to the point now that Seth MacFarlane is to the point now where it's just like he just goes, "No, this is what we're doing." It's a little more the latter. At yeah, this yeah, yeah, point. yeah. I mean, there's, I mean, I sh maybe this is shit I shouldn't say because they're capable of downloading this and watching it. But my he's, but just for you, Seth MacFarlane. I was telling you earlier, one of the best, like literally, you see people when they last this long in show business become different. Yeah, Seth MacFarlane. Every interview I see with him, every he's still wicked funny. Yeah, he's still just self-deprecating. Um, it, whether he's getting off a jet or not, his own jet or not, yeah. it doesn't matter. He's still the same dude, it he seems. Is. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, he is. He's and, and rare. He, yeah, no, absolutely. I've got nothing but awesome things to say about Seth MacFarlane. But um, but no, at this point, it's sort of like, hey, Don't look okay. down. I didn't believe you. You looked down. You went, okay. I have nothing but awesome things to say about Seth MacFarlane. Like, almost <laughs> as, if, as if you were well, helping well, holding, <laughs> holding up a newspaper with today's headline. Is like, <laughs> That's right? what it felt like. It felt like a hostage video. <laughs> Seth MacFarlane, by far, is the best, is, is the most... <laughs> Supreme leader, and I cannot believe that I've done something That's, to harm. No. <laughs> well, first of all, there's no chance he's going to be watching. That this. is true. That's but valid. If he is, or if one of his people is, <laughs> Seth is amazing. He's truly amazing. Like he's truly like a genius. There's, yeah, like, he's a, a tiny genius. handful of people who I work with who like you. Like, all right, that guy for what he is and what he does is a genius, and yep. you are one of them. And Seth MacFarlane absolutely is another. And he's not in the writers' room right now. Um, he hasn't been for a while because he's been doing other stuff. Right now, he's doing this show called The. Orville and he's right. just, just constantly yeah. and he loves it that's his passion probably isn't yeah. it he, you can tell he. that's one of those when he came out I thought oh this is something that Seth MacFarlane yeah, yeah. he went they went oh we're not sure we want to do this and he went mm, you're yeah, doing this so it was uh, like the story which may or may not be true I don't know is that he, he threw a chair at an executive no okay. he wanted to do he really wanted to do the new um, Star Trek series uh, that uh, Paramount they're shooting at Paramount yeah. and uh, Paramount was like no we don't want to give you Star Trek he's like oh please come on I love Star Trek they're like no i don't want to give you star trek so then david goodman who was my old boss at family guy love david the, goodman the, by the way he's a great guy and also the president of the writers guild was smart enough to go to uh to seth and say you know we could do star trek just you and me and like that's that's how he talks that's kind of how he talks that's horrible <laughs> it's a fucking president that's the president no, your, of my union. your imitation is horrible okay you didn't he, really he, sound, he sounds like a, he sounds like an interstellar like, like, like in, in the bad no, no he like, does. He's remember, remember in star wars, wars the kid anyway, that flew, flew was around the when he was a little thing, kid it's the smartest thing he took like this yes yes that's the smartest thing you can do like okay no you don't get to be you don't get to like uh write captain kirk so i'm gonna come to you we're gonna create our own captain that's brilliant and so that's what they've been doing like they're having a blast and if you want like i have my kids watch that show sometimes they love it and they don't realize it's all sort of like and again this is not me criticizing it i love this i love this about it but it's all kind of like like liberal indoctrination of the yes. week right so <laughs> yeah, it's sort yeah. of like there's a lot and that's a, a star wars star, a, star trek was that yeah no it was but i didn't get that but i 100 percent get it now yeah because it's sort of like uh they will like uh, the the uh, you know our crew of like you know funny guys, but like good reasonable people will go to a planet and they'll be like, we believe in our space god and like our you right, know and right, then they, right, you know right. our soldiers our our guys the, the orbital people like come on there's no space god and then by the end of the hour <laughs> like the 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 aliens will be like we have seen the errors of our ways there is no space god <laughs> <laughs> see you next week everyone <laughs> like, so. So uh, every every week my son like watches it and turns to me. It's like, uh, I I haven't watched the show. Did he do it tongue in cheek? Women can have penises too, and and men can have <laughs> uh, have holes, right? And I'm like, yeah, that's what they said sure. on the space show. So my question is this: Do they? Is it? Is it kind of a? It's always a nod to Star Trek, but is it a? Is it a tongue in cheek? Kind of mocking Star Trek for no, doing no, that because really. really. Star Trek was really so they're really they mean it's it. Fact, that's like awesome. The, the I would first, call it erstwhile. Okay. Okay. All right, right, good. We'll call it that. Which is I don't know why you would call it that. Name of my next series. Yeah, but, uh, you know exactly what that word but, is. No, no, no. So, like, uh, no, I have no idea. 
it, it means like, earnest. It means it means that you're doing it. With oh, they're really doing it in earnest. Oh, yeah. Erstwhile. Earnest, it means, it means oh, you're, like, earnest, you're, I would you're completely. I thought erstwhile meant something that happened in the past. Nope. Okay. All right. Well, I've been wrong. That's okay. Dictionaries don't exist in the world, and I for sure I'm not going to be able to go fucking right to a dictionary when this podcast is over, which is 100 percent what I'm going to do, and just verify that I'm in fact correct. And in fact. <laughs> How about this? You, you're able to put this up in post, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll so here, phone in this right space, now. put the word right or wrong with, Perfect. Uh, at this. Okay? So what do you, what do you think okay. erstwhile means? Erstwhile means happened in the past or former, but no longer. I'm saying currently. erstwhile is done with uh, Earnest. honest intent. Okay. So okay. so one of us will be right. Made a note to my editing staff. Should be fun. Put, a, uh, put up gonna... a little <laughs> Or you could just Google says, it right now. No, I'm not. No, no, no. I don't want to know. No, no. I don't want to know right now. We're fixing this in post. I want to watch him. God damn it. I want to watch him post. So, but no. So, uh, like when he first, <laughs> when he, when when Seth first started going around with this idea of the Orville, my current boss, uh, Richard Powell, who is uh, one of the showrunners of Family Guys, super funny, he said, oh my God, I love that. I love that. It's a great idea. It sounds like Galaxy Quest. I fucking love fucking Galaxy Quest. I love Galaxy Quest. Quest. And Seth MacFarlane said, fucking hate galaxy really oh yeah. wow what? he was like I, because he wanted to be what you would call erstwhile what most people would call earnest um right. he wanted it to be wow <laughs> yeah so this, wow. by you know the way this is what i mean about seth though see because everybody would have expected that's see that's interesting because seth mcfarlane when you see ted or you see uh uh, uh once per time in the west uh -huh. whatever you see, uh, what, that million was, ways down million ways window um you you see him go for that. Yeah, I right. mean that's what I mean. He, he kind of did his yeah. You would imagine sound. like, oh, and you think you hear, the first thing he's going to do right, is go be like, oh, this is Star the Trek. show about like what happens to farts in space. Yeah, exactly. But no, that's one hundred percent not the show he wants. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't want to mock Star Trek. That's he basically awesome. wants to do Star Trek that's today, awesome. and um, and that's why I really like about it. So, but I have no connection <laughs> then, to it at all, other he, than a fan. And then he walks over to like, he walks over two offices over to Family Guy. Goes, wait, there's not enough shit jokes in here. Right, exactly. Whack them or not, and they, they got to be smarter than that. These are <laughs> these are base level shit jokes. I need much smarter shit jokes. Yeah. The man of many talents. <laughs> family Guy makes me laugh all the time. Oh, thanks. Uh, it, it just it, 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 it's sometimes the right turns. You know, I have a big thing with story. It should have, but sometimes you guys just like sh boom, and like yeah. and then it's over here, and then back, and I'm like, what the fuck was that? It was funny. I know, and sometimes we just don't even care. Like. There's a, <laughs> there's a, uh, like one of my favorite endings. There's an episode where uh, the Griffins go on like a yacht rock cruise and, uh, you know, like Christopher Cross and uh, all the, you know, there. and it, uh, and Kenny Loggins is there. And then it, we do, it oh, turns yeah. into like a, um, uh, uh, like a, not a towering inferno, but what was the, yeah, yeah, the, the, the Poseidon adventure. The Poseidon, it turns into a Poseidon adventure yeah. of that, right? And then at the end, like there's no escape and the waters, they're like stuck in the hole of the boat and there's the, the water sort of rising and like you can see we're, uh, we're running out of time on this episode. <laughs> you a minute now. And it just cut straight from that to them back at home in the, in their living room, sitting on the couch going, well, that was crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember like, that. Like, like, when, nobody cares like how they got off. Like, it's not about like, oh no, because we planted but, a story element in the first act, and this is yeah. how. But that's blah, blah, what blah. that was great I with the show on the tables. Act which is very but sort of gracefully wiped it off. But what's great about it is that you guys do that, and because you've because you've done that for seventeen years now. Twenty, twenty. It's yeah. over twenty years. So twenty years has been doing that. That, that, that you have since you have very few rules let's say family guy has very few rules yeah. uh when it comes to story and but be, so because of that do you want to know what by the way do you want to know one of the one of the rules yes i would okay so if, if there's any celebrities watching this <laughs> this is not never happening one of the rules <laughs> is don't make a joke about anyone who has been nice to seth at a party Really? Yeah, it's one hundred percent the case. Like we will we'll write a joke and like all we ever do, like any episode is just sort of like rip on celebrities. Right. Like, oh, that show sucks. Oh, that actor's terrible, blah, blah, blah. And then Seth will be like, you know what? Actually, I ran into that person. They were really nice. And they were super oh, that's nice. Sweet. So so uh, I swear to God, all you gotta do, and, and the, the writer's room will kill me for saying this, is just say one fucking thing nice so, to so Seth. So that's why once. You, you guys have never ripped my ass. Never, because you were nice to Seth one time, one and so time. and so yeah. You, know, you guys ran a thing on. You guys did. Sh sh you guys mocked Fox one time, and, and, and we, Titus we, was there. We ended up on the list of, of shows. Basically, I forget it was shows. Fo no, it's they, something like Fox like, had fucked or something. If like Fox that. had canceled, and a whole bunch of other shows that Fox has canceled for no good reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were on. I was yeah. good. I was. I was like. Hey, we man. always sat in there at home like. <laughs> 
I know. <laughs> uh, so, guys, uh, uh, this episode uh, is brought to you by uh, uh, Feels, a uh, CBD oil. CBD, do you use a CBD oil? I do not. Uh, you don't. I hear good things, but I do not. I got to tell you, man, you, you, you it, it, it makes me as hyper and an antsy as I am. Yeah. It makes me, it just goes. Okay. It brings me down a little bit. But this, no, is you, this is you brought down? No, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not on it today. I was yeah. had you guys on. Are you kidding right. me? I'm not, I'm, not gonna, I'm not toning it down. Uh, I'm trying. I'm more nervous about hearing about what I did on the show that I still Oh, we never got onto that. We're no, going to. We we're going to. Uh, by the way, uh, Feels, uh, so so I use it uh, to help me sleep and uh, and. Uh, and by the way, a feel. So by the way, it, it has me feeling good. If you want to go get some feels, go to feels.com forward slash Titus and you get 50% off your first order and free shipping. That's right. That's feels.com forward slash Titus. Uh, uh, and become a member, by the way, and get 50% automatically off. That's cool. Um, all right. And that's, by the way, usually our co-host is here doing the ads. I don't do the ads. Yeah. So uh, you can so tell you're her. so good at them. But I will. I know, right? You can tell you're I just, natural. Yeah, you're hardly <laughs> ever we're just reading directly Thank you. <laughs> feels. <laughs> feels forward slash Titus. Get that fifty percent off. Wow, so, <laughs> that, was that was great. <laughs> Better? Yeah, yeah. No, I, yeah I tuned it up. See, After that, what... I need CBD oil. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go to feels.com <laughs> forward slash Titus, and you can get it. Um, After this, I may try CBD. We oil. had such a weird thing to do on that show too that we had, uh, and and we we've been we were copied. I by the way, we stole it from George Burns looking at camera talking. But the black and white was such a weird thing, and Patrick was brilliant at this. Patrick would when we did Titus. So we had these things, and they, they, it, we had like t we almost had t three stories going on at once. Sometimes right. we had the flashback with the kids, and sometimes we told that as a linear story. Then we had the the black and white space where I talked to the camera, right. which always was like neutral space, neutral yeah. space, yeah. which was always this weird like this weird kind of talking about an emotion or uh, how human beings but it was are. Like the inside of your head. Yeah, but yeah. it was also if you look if you look at it, we went through we would pick something, um, you know, we would uh, dysfunctional families, whatever we picked, and and that would have this one track. Then the story would have this other track and they had to meet somehow yeah now chris sheridan said that and when we've hired him he said he goes you guys have really painted yourself into a corner with this show yeah an elegant corner i think is the word yeah he you said painted and yourself into an and, elegant corner and then he said and i said is that a problem and he goes no you have to write well to get out of it yeah. though and that made me i was like yes this is gonna be hard <laughs> yeah um and it was and, and it, it was, was. Yeah. uh it was but when we nailed it oh, man there's three episodes i don't like in the entire 54 oh run. okay this is interesting. what are the three yeah. that you don't like they all had to do with Elizabeth Berkeley. For some reason, we seemed to get off track whenever we brought my sister Shannon in. Interesting. And it's not the actress. It was just we we seemed to get off track when we brought Shannon in. Okay. Uh, and not not for any other reason than Shannon was with her mom most of the time. And I think it comes down to me not living with Shannon all the time. Okay. So I didn't. But everybody, my but my brother, but Dave, everybody else, I was so I was so like this. I could go. Nope, yeah. that wouldn't happen. I but could, you just didn't know her quite as well as you I did. could. Yeah. So yeah. we ended up writing. It ended up being more sitcom -y. Yeah. And it's only be, I think it's because of my knowledge in it you know huh. and, and it took me years to figure out that why i didn't like those episodes uh my, my, my what's brother, your favorite one of all to, oh man favorite episode of titus uh i don't mind by the way uh i, I like I'm curious to hear yours okay uh i like tommy's not gay the pit and the pendulum um uh though that, that two episode arc and then i love the one where mom dies, where yeah. Keech is fi dry firing a gun into a closet, man. Uh -huh. I remember the day he did that. We're dealing with my mother basically killing herself across the country. She shows up. It ends up not being really her. So it was like this ooh thing yeah. at the end. And it was so funny and so good. Um, uh, ball lightning, remember? Ball lightning. Ball lightning. <laughs> ball lightning. Was that the one where you uh, were the one? Is that the one where mom shows up? It's such a slight moment. The one where mom shows up and. Uh, you uh, also have like a, a woman from the adoption agency visiting. Yeah, who, by the way, is. And you're holding up a sign that says uh, mom because you're trying to show, yeah. uh, you know, uh, Aaron uh, that uh, mom is here. Yeah. And then, and then uh, the other woman looks and you like. You're like, wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna have a kid. No, wow. that's that's when you're trying to adopt. Uh, uh, we were trying to adopt uh, um, Amy, Ra okay. Rachel, Rachel okay, Roth. Yeah, yeah, right. The one I'm talking about is at the very end. Uh, we put mom in the closet. Yeah. And we all we and all. She every, never was there. And she was never there. That was she awesome. Died. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was that that episode for me. That I remember we, there that, being a specific moment. We in pulled that. that. We pulled that episode off and made it work. Is yeah. crazy on a sitcom. Yeah. I remember there being like a specific moment where the mom character like hands you a towel to like w w dry your hands off and you 
like started to get into the logic of like, wait a second, she couldn't hand me the towel. So I can't take that towel from her. So maybe she gestures to it and I'll take it or something. Like there was some sort of- Yeah, like we had to do that. We had to- Internal we, logic to it where you're like- To six you know, sense it out. And it, yeah. to basically six sense That's it out. That's we like, pitched it. That's how we pitched it. In the moment, <laughs> nobody would be like, wait a second, mom couldn't do that because, but like people watching it a second time would see. So I need to, you were basically like, I need to- I need to uh, make sure that this is structured so that somebody can watch it twice and it would make sense both times. Even then I was like, okay, we need to track it because there's this new thing called the internet where ah, people are writing ah, all this ah. shit about it. So, and they're tracking it. So let's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, let's, so my favorite episode was the Thanksgiving episode. Oh, awesome. Where it was told basically backwards. And but the neutral space. No, was that yeah, that was a dinner. second. That was a, was that the second one where I ended up in the hospital. We have Thanksgiving in the hospital. Uh, this was one that Sheridan wrote, and it was right. like Ugh. basically like it starts with like a fucking nightmare and we so, food so fight, like, huge fight, screaming huge and yelling. Fight. Yep, that's like the start of the episode. <laughs> but then in the neutral space, you're sort of preparing for Thanksgiving. Yeah, and then Sorry. and then the, the like the main story sort of goes backwards. Yeah, so you got to fucking plant things at the end that you're you know plant things backwards basically at the end that you then sort Pay of are off paying off. With I think Chris had to write that forward. Start. And then yeah, and then <coughs> but then the uh, the dinner in like the neutral space is going forward, right? So you're right. ending with the um, uh, with the pumpkin pie. And like, it also has one of my favorite sort of very fucking dark jokes uh, in the neutral space <laughs> where you're talking about the first Thanksgiving, like, you know, it, things ended up working up for everybody. You know, the the pilgrims ended up creating like the greatest and most powerful, you know, nation on the planet spreading from shore to shore. And the Indians, well, you know. They're, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and then you, you can't you can't reach the light bulb because you're down and so you like grab a remote control, you turn the light bulb. Uh that's that was, that was, that an was awesome. one of my favorite episodes. We, there, was, there was another we did two holiday episodes. One we ended up in the hospital. Yeah. We ended up having it I had Thanksgiving dinner on a gurney okay. in the hospital. We did um that episode, the first Thanksgiving episode when the family was fighting, that was the episode where Faye Dunaway showed up. And um, she showed part of the reason we didn't hire Fred Dunaway is because on a script I had written, she shows up. She we had we we have the food fight. We'd film the food fight scene. They said, Chris, Faye is here to see you. I, I walk <laughs> off the stage. I'm I'm doing this. I'm taking food off. Now, who was saying was that like a some grip or a gas? Yeah, room? someone even got me because Faye Dunaway had showed up to play mom. Yeah. And uh, and I walked over and she had a script that I'd written. Yeah. You know, we all pitched out, we would write it. I I I, the, I always wanted everything. We would all we would all work the story hard. Mm -hmm. And then we'd give it to one guy because yeah. I always wanted to go through that guy's brain. Yeah. Uh, and because then, then it didn't. When you gangbang stuff, what ends up happening is you have two scenes that don't have the same fucking right. tone. Yeah, yeah, or I get fucking it. Weird. So weird. It would all go through yeah. one guy's head, and then we would fit pitch on after. So I just think it, it might may be crazy, but it seems to be the tone. tone so back to Faye Dunaway. I walk over to Faye Dunaway. I'm I'm taking. I've told this story mashed before, potatoes and shit off your face. Uh, it's <laughs> bad, man. You guys are trying to wipe shit off. Uh, and Faye goes, "Hi, Christopher Faye." And she goes, and she's got a script, and it's got ten or different post-it notes sticking out of the sides of it. She goes, "Yeah, I read the script. It's really good. Here's what I'm not gonna do." And she starts flipping through it, and everything. The whole episode was my mom was crazy, so we'd written all this crazy shit that mom did in the flashbacks. She wouldn't do any of them. She she wouldn't she wouldn't go over without half a bald wig. She wouldn't do anything to the kids. Any, and I'm like, well, how do how do we how do we okay. I went, okay, and walked back and I go, Well, she's not doing any of it. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, We gotta rewrite it. And then uh and and then Jack and Brian were like, hey, it was a bad one. That was oh god, that's that's when I that's that was the first time I pissed off Gail Berman <laughs> by saying we're yeah, not gonna hire right. we're not gonna fire Faye Dunaway. She was so so quiet. She, I said because no one would call her. Yeah. Everybody else is saying, No, I'm not taking heat for this. I'm like, guys, i I said we're losing crew. I go, yeah. we're losing people. Right. I, and I go, We have to build a new set every week. We need these guys. Yeah. I go, I'm not gonna give up everybody for one actor. And uh, and no, uh, and I and then Stacy came up. Stacy goes goes. Uh, uh, well, of course you got a higher fan. I'm like, okay. Well, I said if it goes bad though, will you take the heat for it and talk to the crew? He's like, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> and I was like, you coward. Yeah, and no, I'm a dumb. I'm a dumb person because I said, oh, well, I'll take it on. Then I was William Wallace. I thought I was in my head, just like you said. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, so my behavior. I thought I thought I had a blast on the show. You know, Jack is so mad at me. Uh, after the show got canceled and Jack was mad at me. Brian said he was fine. Um, even Gary, Gary Newman said, I never saw somebody work harder than you did. Um, but uh, if you had, if you could go back in time to that, to what would you have to, what would you tell me 
how to deal with the show. How, Nothing how, really. Like, honestly, you know, I think I feel bad. Maybe that I'm saying this to the exact wrong two people in the world, but like maybe Titus. <laughs> Like not hire Zach is going to no, be. No, no, no. Hire don't Zach. hire Zach Ward. <laughs> maybe Titus went. Maybe the Titus series went exactly as long as Titus is. It, it did. Go, That's right? it. The like, world's the world's I mean, in perfect it, harmony. It, like, it, yeah. Honestly, like I feel like yeah. Like if 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 I were to go back in time and I'd be like, okay, we need to make decisions that will. All that matters to us is to sort of lengthen the run of this show. We don't want three seasons of fucking hard funny. We want seven seasons of like, eh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's there. It's like, but I don't think you would have been happy. I no. know you would not have been happy. And no. like, I feel like what we got was what was what we got. You know, like if we, it would have been nice to. There's another thing a human being should not say. Would have been nice for it to stick around till 9-11 so that we could have like, you know. It did. We did. Did we, did. did we do 9-11? Oh, no. Dude, we, we, did. we shot on 9-11, don't you rem- bro. Dude, oh, we should have. To, we did two. We yes. did We did, a, we no, did, a we did three we, episodes. We did. Where FBI. Yes. All right. Okay. So I take yeah, it back. The last, don't you remember we came right, in that so day? Really the day did. of so the maybe, morning. All right. So maybe maybe we should have ended just before 9-11. No. That would have been that was the second season, bro. He was naked in the airplane bathroom. And he's got he's got a fucking beard. Of yes. thing and he's wearing a towel on his head yes. and 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 Shatra screaming a la king. king don't yeah. you remember that I do remember we did Allah, a terrorist Allah, Allah. episode right. people we did a terrorist episode literally a month or two after 911 mm, remember a little bit after that 911 Nine, was uh we had just gotten back to work yeah we just gotten back to work my hand was broken it was in a cast uh-huh. i was watching the towers fall at home Jesus. and went to work wow and we all sat down and said are we going to do this show Every other show in LA had been shut down. Yeah. Everything else had stopped. Yeah. And we literally had a conversation. Uh, the producers, the writer, everybody was in a room and said, we can stop. We're okay with it if that's what you want to do. But your attitude is like, and I think we all said, like, I personally don't want to stop. I don't want to. It's not that I disrespect the pain and loss, but I also feel like those fuckers don't to get to come over here and, our job and is, steal my sandwich. And I said, uh, our fuck job those is guys. To make people laugh. Our job right. is to move you guys. So we did. Just like we William were the, Wallace. By the we way, William the, Wallace said that too. Now I know he's not saying that. <laughs> yeah. Aren't you but saying that, like I gave not, a speech that riled up the? <laughs> but it was that moment that we yeah. like. Right. I remember that week. I remember doing it, and it was the end of the series. That that was season three yeah and it was the end of that season that we did the on the plane the a la a la king yeah. a la king type of thing and it i so that's that a was... funny thing about the ending of the series is that yeah, it, it ends up being much. your crazy ass spoiler alert your crazy ass is insane inside of an insane asylum and the perspective is that all these stories the last three seasons have all been you talking to a therapist and they've all been in your fucking head. I pitched that. I pitched that. That's how it came and off then to me. Jack yeah. and Brian, I pitched it at the end at the last scene of Titus, and we didn't do it because Jack it felt and, like that to me. Anyways. Jack, Jack and Brian basically, said, "Incidentally, is, that's like all of season three of Mr. Robot." By the way, is that is it really? It might be season. But three. see, I felt like that at the end of it. So I agree with you to a point, which is the show amazingly had had its beginning and it had closure to me. Yeah, it ended yeah. up in a middle. And I, I fucking hated that it ended. On the flip side, I will tell you this. If it had continued, uh, my ex-wife would be very, very happy <laughs> and it would not have affected my life That's at all because I lived point. in California. I would have gotten ass raped yeah. as I already did. Sure. So really the only person who lost me out too, is, is her. Yeah. Okay. All so right. when I get those residuals it now would have cost, it would have cost for more money. 16 cents, <laughs> Fuck off. Sure, so people, sure, here, sure, here's sure. how we wanted to end the show. And I got I got kiboshed. I, I, I knew I had this feeling because I wasn't getting along with the network president. My fault, you know, although it, she wasn't easy to get along with. But yeah. it was she got fired from Paramount for being hard to get along with. Yeah. But you have two people that I I, I I need to shut the fuck up. I've learned this. You say people can't have change. you. Oh, yeah, I have. When it, yeah, and, or I just do my own shit now, and I get, right. I get to decide. I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll get, I'm like, okay, I don't need to do that. I, I don't I don't have to argue with you anymore. I'm just like, no. I'll go over here. Yep. Uh, so I wanted to end it like this. The last neutral space, I wanted to and do the neutral space to camera, talk in the, in the black and white, have the camera pull back through. You pull back through a security camera, and there's two guards, and it says, like, blah, blah, metal oh. institution. And he goes, this fucking guy never shuts up. That would have been awesome. <laughs> that would have been great. He's been that doing this. Been he just awesome. keeps, do, he's been doing this for three years. He just won't stop telling these stories. That yeah, that's funny. He's, yeah. he's never getting out of here. That's- Click out.
would have been great. And they said, uh, Jack and Brian said, Brian, very, Brian, I think Brian was was so pragmatic all the time. Yep. He just said, uh, if they do bring us back, we've ended the show. Yeah. And so we can't end the show. Yeah. And I was like, ah, okay. <laughs> but they didn't bring us back. They didn't, no, bring, us they didn't back. bring us back. But no, I would not, honestly, I would not go back and tell you to do anything different because I, I fucking, like, it, there was like plenty of conflict in the writer's room, but it was constructive conflict. Like you and Jack would sometimes like Jack Kenny would sometimes go right at it. But I always felt like he always he said was, I was way too angry at him. He said, he said, your anger scared the shit out of me. I never, I, I, I that's just how I was I raised. I, well, I don't know. Like, yeah. You weren't yelling at me, you know, no. so he did. You did that with me. But, but I, like I saw it like I saw. I'm sorry. I, I was just say like I saw that it was constructive. It wasn't about ego. It wasn't like, OK, Jack feels like he has to win right now. And Titus feels like he has to win. So there's sort of no way it was 100 percent like this is the story point that we need to hash out. We could do this. We could do that one person thinks this is probably the right way to go one person thinks the other is the right way to go and the only way they know how to deal with it is just to fucking like hash it out and then we're gonna get there and finally somebody's gonna be like ah all right you're fucking right we're gonna do it that way and i've never because it was not about because it no, was not how about funny sort of can like, we make this fucking show yeah, how funny can we make this show about like dick measuring or something like it, right. it honestly never bothered me. we actually had i was so good we had i remember when pas would walk up we, there was a there was times when we were on the set doing those flashbacks and sometimes they, you know, we had funny in 15 seconds. Remember we had to be funny in 15 seconds. So we would, uh, which is family guys are awesome at. Yeah. Holy shit. You guys cut away funny back to the story. It's awesome. I remember anybody who walked up wardrobe, anybody go, Hey guys, what if you guys just said this? And I'd be like, that's really funny yeah, guys yeah. stop yeah like, let's do that remember we yeah, just no 100 all we gave a shit about a was a fucking funny joke comes from hitler or something <laughs> yeah. like, fucking hitler had a funny one like, let's put that hey in. what hitler said that don't listen to all of he says that one, thing, that one he said, thing he said really funny was funny we'd be idiots not to use it <laughs> yeah no he's not getting story credit at all he's not <laughs> no. he's still getting give me coffee hitler but good pitch. <laughs> but good pitch, good, good pitch. <laughs> good pitch. <laughs> You got it. You got a future in this business. Tone down some of the other stuff. I remember one of the things I used to do was uh, would we'd pitch something funny and they go, "It's funny," and I'd go, "I go, oh, that's really funny. What's funnier?" And you, I remember looking at you guys sometimes. And you guys would go, "That oh. <laughs> was annoying." Yeah, <laughs> but it worked because we jokes I came up, are hard. Jokes are hard. Jokes yeah. are difficult. But you to don't write. even know. Uh, this it guy hurts so much you, to write a joke, and then I and would, then just for whatever reason, the joke like, oh no, no, that reminds me of my ex girlfriend, so we're, we're not going to do it. Like, I never said it like that. No, you did. <laughs> don't, don't throw away a joke. I may never write another joke again. <laughs> that may have been the last joke I'll ever write. And, and you now you say that, away. and that, that's how you felt then. So you did, you did three years on Titus, and you've done sixteen years on Family Guy. Years so you have twenty guy. years of just pumping fucking jokes out. So yeah. do you, you understand that jokes are endless yeah, but you always sort of feel like i'm on my night don't you don't you no, not my... even necessarily with jokes just sort of with like life like stories no just you, you maybe it's just me i constantly <laughs> am sure and positive i know what's gonna happen now somebody's gonna walk through that door and they're gonna point at me that guy's a fraud that guy uh, doesn't yeah. fucking belong here yeah and you know what what i'm gonna do when that person walks in the door i'm gonna be like Guys, everyone, I'm sorry. He's right. And I, I had a good run. I wasted everyone's time. I'll <laughs> gather my things. Like, you don't need to sort of, you know, escort it. me to the exit. Like, do you ever? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah. So and I've only been even, doing this for 40 years. Even yeah. now? I don't, Sometimes. I don't feel like it's the least healthy thing in the world. Honestly. Well, it, it, and it's, it's also like, well, it keeps you funny. Do you, you know, the part, you, you know, the part of it that helps me is Tell I me. watch, I watch other material. Yeah. And sometimes that other material is brilliant. Some of that is absolute garbage. Yeah. And I came up with my own little axiom, yeah. right? Which is great movies are inspirational, but bad movies are motivational. Because okay. when you watch that, you go, I fucking sucked. I can do better than that guy. And that gets you off the fucking couch. Yeah. And especially if you watch a bad joke and a bunch of idiots laugh and you're like, that wasn't fucking funny. Or you watch a bad stand up comedian, you're like, I got blows. Or a bad movie, you're like, I can do better than that. This isn't fucking perfect. And that's the thing is, you don't write perfect. Nobody writes perfect out of the gate. But you start, and then you can start tweaking and building and building. That's why I learned from the show. Yeah. And 99% of those people don't do shit. Yeah. And so you watch some garbage, and you're like, I'm better than that motherfucker. I want to get there, but I'm definitely not him. 
and then you push. I'm really glad. Push. I'm really glad that you were driven by vengeance and hatred. <laughs> I just cause no, that's why I'm. That's why I'm. Driven. Dude, I, my I, entire <laughs> my, my entire career started because at the age of eight, I watched a performance of uh, Taming of the Shrew. Okay. And I saw wow. an actor do a line that my mom had explained to me. I was eight years old. She was at the Stratford Festival Theater, which is the most uh, most honorific position you can get as a theater actor. And it, his line was, my tail and your tongue. And it basically meant, you're going to touch my wiener. Yeah. Okay. And my mom explained to me she was a hippie. She didn't get into the how crass it was, but it made me giggle. And I watched this guy do this do this line, and I was excited. Yeah, that's naughty. He's gonna do a, a dick joke. He's gonna, he's gonna say it. Here it comes. Amongst, Shakespearean dick joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shakespearean <laughs> dick joke. It's so Family Guy. It's amazing. Twelve hundred people in this audience. He's like, and my tail, and your tongue. Absolute fucking silence. And I am sitting on the edge of my seat, and I'm fucking pissed. I'm like, At eight. I'm better than him. <laughs> I could have sold that fucking joke. You, and I went home you to my shit mom. You bed with Shakespeare. You, yeah, and I went home to my mom. was like, I want to be an actor. Why? Because I'd grown up since I was five around it. It wasn't to me about the red carpet. It was about working with everybody together to create something. And that guy sucked. And I was better than him. That's Fuck funny. that guy. You know, so That's I, been my entire career is, I may not be Spielberg, but I can try. So you've been this intolerable since you were five. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, uh, by the way, this looks good. Uh, I want you to get some Harry's Razors. By the way, another sponsor of the Ties Podcast, Harry's Razors, the best razors, five blades. They've got a German factory. I use it. We've got military in our family that were, there, uh, that were on this path to their razors. They didn't change it. We got them onto Harry's. They switched it. Go to harrys.com forward slash Titus for the best razors. You, By the way, there's a, there's a deal right now if you go use forward slash Titus. But you, you need to get one. This is scruffy. Yeah, I look like a homeless. I, a little like a yeah, homeless. Yeah, it's not good. Yeah, it's not yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but Harry's razors. Uh, have you used them at all? Didn't we give you? No, Harry's you razors? didn't give me any. No, no. I will give you Harry's razors, dude. Oh, it's cool. the best razors. Right. I, I I mean, feel feel right there. That's one. That's one pass, baby. Oh, that's nice. One pass. Come it's on. Good. Not a lot of ingrown yeah, hairs. I, 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 okay. Do you get a lot of ingrown hairs? Sure. I, by the way, I'm not kidding. Not unsolicited. Here, here's here's the thing. We I don't this podcast. I, I we we did this for free forever. We don't take ads unless we use this stuff. Yeah. Um. And uh, Harry's razor have been our sponsor for five or six years now. And they are just the best razors. So go to harrys.com forward slash Titus. Get your Harry's uh, uh, razors and your, and your deal. They have the, I think it's like free shipping, 13 bucks. Just look it up. Go get it. And Rachel will be here next week to give you the exact details uh, about it. But they're the best. Okay, Harry's. Wait, I'm doing it. Harry's razors. The best razors money can buy. Harry's.com. Ooh. Feel so hairy. Four fully <laughs> slash Titus face the day. <laughs> you got creepy. That was creepy, and I'm and I'm semi hard right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is probably like you should at cut your that age. That's an accomplishment. <laughs> wow! Wow! Nice. Right? Okay, Come that's on. A, that was coming back we for go. the thing earlier. Here we go. All right. Here we go. Um, so uh, so my behavior wasn't as bad as everybody says. No. I never threw it. Just so you know, I never threw a chair at okay. anybody. I you know I, the, we were in the writers' room. This is I think where this came from. We were in this writers' room one day. We got a call that said they had moved the show. Ooh, yeah, they yeah, yeah, they had moved the show again. They moved us last year. They Third year, they moved it to from. We literally went from Tuesday nights after our our opener was uh, that '70s show, yeah. and we were doing like a 15 share average. We were fucking slaying back then, and then they moved us in the following year. Whatever day. We went to like a 930 spot. We went we went to another fucking day which we had no lead in and you lost your shit. Yeah. And, and, and then was, you went was, on strike. I was at the for head of the writers room table uh, and there was no one behind me and we had those rolling chairs and I just I did a back kick and I kicked the chair back. <gasps> six he kicked a chair. I was so mad. <laughs> chair abuse. We were working, you know, so you bothered me about the show, and I and it's funny because I had to call Jack about this finally because Jack was talking. To, I mean, I got literally from agencies telling me that no, we've heard that you're really difficult, and it was from 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 Jack. And I, I I said, dude, I go, do you understand what I was doing? I go, I was on set, I was in the room writing, I was, I had a psychotic wife, I was getting four hours of sleep a night, and I did that for three years. Yeah. I go, do you, I go, I was a vampire. I go, I don't remember the last three months or six months. I don't remember a lot of it because it was just, it was just this fucking grind and it never, it should never be like that because the rest of it in the writer's room with you guys was awesome. Don't you love the writer's room? Yeah, I totally love it. In fact, it's all like, honestly, when I see somebody do it, when you just sort of describe that life that you were living, like, I feel like some people would be like, Oh God, I want that. I want all of that. And like, not me. Like I just, I'm so happy just sort of like, honestly, like 
on the assembly line, like, okay, I made this widget, right? And like down the line it goes. And like, all right, right? Each Here's joke another joke. Is a, each joke is in another <laughs> yeah. is a fucking widget. Like down the line <laughs> it goes, right? And so, and at the end of the day, people would be like, oh, what was your favorite widget? Like, you don't have a favorite widget. You you're know? kind of an like, iron worker. Down the line it goes. You're like a blue collar joke writer. But it just sort of, it's good for keeping your head out, Sane, of, yeah. out, of, out of the shit, you know? Yeah. Like, honestly, like, it's like somebody will tell me when to go away. So until until that happens, you know, until the check stop come in, we're like, I'll just be here making widgets and just kind of whoever I, wants to sort of like, oh, we're on Tuesday. All right. Well, how does that affect the widget making? Oh, it doesn't. All right. Down the line it goes. So let know? me say this. Uh, uh, I've seen a lot of writers come and go. You have on one of the hardest shows to write, uh, which Titus, which Titus, I think Titus was, yeah. to another one of the hardest shows to write. You know, say what you will about Family Guy. People say, oh, don't any rules. They can do what they want. They still have to be funny within those weird rules. You guys have weird, like it's that like you guys, and you keep the story going. It's that shows that shows got to be at least as hard as Titus was to write. Well, it's one of those things where it's like you you picked all the lowest hanging fruit long ago, right? Right, oh, yeah. right. Story wise, you you can't be like, okay, can we do one where Peter uh, like gets in a bodybuilding? Like yeah. we've done like, eight of those, right? Like, <laughs> so like that's hard, and like jokes too, right? Because a lot of them is they're like, okay, go write a TV gag, and we're like, okay, well, you can't do like a mad about you joke, like that's been. You did that. You did that back when George W. Bush was president. Wow, you know? I didn't even think about this. Like you guys have, wow. So how hard is it to come up with new shit? Oh, I, I've never thought. Of, it's super imagine God if we hurt. had to do the same five characters for sixteen years and write them. Yeah. Well, they would actually develop. They grow they older. They would, but his yeah. their characters Don't, never right. age. Meg is still in high school, right? And it's sixteen years later. She'd have kids by now. She would have kids or be by a now. full out lesbian. Yeah. Whatever okay. she'd go. And yeah. you have done that. You've done that. Flash forward to to the yeah. family. Well, yeah, you, you can do that, and then you're like, all right, and we're coming back to sort right. of like face kids, <laughs> you know. So and you can get away with shit like, okay, now we're gonna do an episode where like we'll choose three Michael Bay movies, right? And like, oh, okay, we're gonna do you know Peter in um you know Armageddon, and then right. Peter. Right. Rock with, like you can sort of do that stuff like that's kind of fun but Fuck the um, star wars holy shit yeah star holy wars, shit yeah. which we would never be able to do now by the way like <laughs> we got to do that disney. how did you guys pull that off we got to do that because <laughs> it was disney uh, it, wasn't no, it wasn't disney, disney yeah that's yet. what i'm saying it, was, it wasn't Lucas disney yeah it's like willing we had to like send him stuff and he was like super cool about it there were some things where like mm, i don't want to have racism in space we'd be like okay no racism <laughs> in space but, then, <laughs> but like disney is way more more, There's um, gonna be so much more racism in space. Yeah. Like, like once we find oh, yeah, the aliens. No, absolutely. Here's but a question Disney for you: Now that more sort of possessive of their, but now that Disney has taken over Fox, why isn't Titus the TV series not on the streaming Disney Plus? Because now they own all that shit. Yeah, we don't we have own, any of that. It wouldn't be Disney Plus because Disney, Hulu. Like we're not on Whatever. Disney Plus either. Like it would be Hulu, right? And that's a very good question. Why I, not? I don't know. The well, you're a big swinging dick. I'm Go swing that big dick, big no, boy. Just, hey, swing that dick. Big, by the way, swing that dick. Swing that let's dick. Next widget, swing it. Next widget, let's talk about swing it. it. I'll put a post-it on it. I'll be like, oh, yeah, here's my story yeah. joke. Also, put Titus on, on who? I'll like, just I'll tweet out there. Wait, wait, Patrick Negan with his huge was, swinging dick. Because I was just thinking about this. Speaking of saying that, so there was a day in the writer's room. We were there, and Chris Sheridan, for some reason, drew a picture of you uh -huh. on a piece of paper where it was Patrick uh, naked. Uh, it was cartoon Patrick. Yeah. His dick was hitting the floor. Uh -huh. Patrick's so tall. It goes across his foot. <laughs> and, it lays out. And, 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 and because the joke is because you're such a tall guy right. that you're hung like a monster. Yeah. That, so this was going in the writer's room for about three months. Yeah. And then, then so, so, so you still have a monster penis. Yeah. Okay. No, it's pretty go. good. My, right. yeah. his, his dick is so big, it doesn't call Spielberg back. But I want you to know, that was literally, there was this there was this weird running thing in the writer's room that Patrick is hung like a monster. That's yeah. awesome. It's, yeah. it's, it's, I it's do, impressive. I do okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what I wanted to hear. Oh, you his dick has his own agent, actually. <laughs> he's represented. <laughs> yeah, he's got on another show. Actually. Yeah, it's got a dick, better agent than him. His penis writes on another <laughs> show. Uh, well, dude, I got to say, uh, thanks for being on. Uh, I, I have to say that my experiences uh, were enhanced on the show because you were on it. Also, you made me really listen to people more because Patrick is not – maybe you're different now because at that time you were you, the writer's assistant and then you became the writer and then we kept bumping you up because you were so fucking good. Um, 
you made me always hear what's going on around because there's so much more that people can contribute. Doesn't matter what level they're at. There's like, like again, we had fuck the fucking guy that worked the front gate one night said, "Hey, I really liked the show last night, man. I think the Cynthia Watchers needs to blah blah." And I remember driving in and going, "That's a fucking good idea," yeah. and telling Jack and Brian, "Yeah, well, I mean, those were notes about what underpants Cynthia Watchers." <laughs> yeah. Really Do you remember that? that? Do you remember that meeting? Were you in that meeting when the guy asked about the bra, the, the Bahamas, where my dad had the heart attack, and we did all that weird imagery? Yeah. Because uh, by the way, I've told some of these stories and people. Maybe maybe I misheard him. We had this. Uh, you weren't in the meeting. Her current executive came in, and we did an episode in the Bahamas where Stacy dies. Stacy has a heart attack in the middle of winning. Remember this episode? Yeah, yeah. I remember being in the Bahamas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, it, 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 he's winning, and he won't leave the table, and his fucking left side goes numb, and he keeps he, he keeps playing. Right, he, he's he's literally having a heart attack. Really far. I think that still makes me laugh. Yeah. He falls off the chair, dies, goes through space. He's going through the galaxy, comes up across the, the pearly gates, beating on the gates. They shut the lights of heaven off. They don't let him in like they're not there. And then you hear you hear a piano go bang, and you go, Jesus, sorry. And like we're doing all this shit we shouldn't do on a sitcom. Right. So we we went into the pit to the meeting after the run through. Like, oh man, we're fucked. We're so fucked on this one. And I, this is one of the ones. This is the top top three of I thought we were screwed. The last episode two of the molested when my my niece got molested. That's the other one I thought we when I. Be, take a bat to a dude in the bathroom um <laughs> hilarious uh, <laughs> i'm laughing already. <laughs> all right i'm in don't even stop there you had me at bat but, yeah. but, but it happened yeah but it happened so you have um to do it. and so we're all in the th thing and and i had to learn to back off a little bit but i knew we were going to get nailed on this so i said well what do you think and the guy goes well i have an issue i, I go I, he said I'll, I'll never forget this guy this was my most this was my most hated current executive um well Cynthia's going to be wearing a bikini in this episode, right? And I'm like, yeah. And he says, uh, uh, well, uh, yeah, so I want to make sure that we can go as far as we can go with how small the bikini can be. <laughs> so can you send me some bikini? I go, I go well, uh, so what about him going to like the religious imagery and him flying through space and beating on Heaven's Gate? No, that's really funny. So do me a favor. Send me a couple different choices so I can see the bikinis and we'll figure. What like on her? No, no, he wanted us to send, he actually asked for us to send him. He wanted Pictures Ward, of just the bikini, not the bikini on her. No, no, he wanted Wardrobe to see the bikini so to make crazy. sure it was. important. I like for the story to work, I'm going <laughs> to need to smell the, right, right, right. after and, it's warm. Uh, now, I will give him this. Remember, we, <laughs> we, all, <laughs> we all know what made friends a success in and the I, beginning. And I need one shoe. Jennifer Annis's <laughs> nipples. <laughs> we all know what made friends a success sure. in the beginning of the series. Sure. She didn't wear a thick enough bra on that set. A, a, a sitcom sets so are very so cool. You're taking his side. I know. I am saying, as an executive who wants <laughs> to make money, and you go, well, Friends makes a lot of money, and whenever it's boring, you have a beautiful woman's pair of breasts to look at yeah. because she's always always has erect nipples. Yeah, nipples sell. And that's and, why you weren't in the writer's room on Titus. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't a writer. I, I Zach, was one step above PA. Zach Ward's note, he noticed Cynthia chewing on a pencil. <laughs> He'd like to have the pencil, please, for the wow. story. And by the way, wow. we, need a, we need a three-minute flashback of her chewing on a pencil, <laughs> if that's okay. Remember changing Cynthia, too, on the pilot? Do you remember like we, we had Cynthia written and and, and they were going to fire her? Yeah. And and, and we, we went in the room and we were like, she's of one of the she's we she's we, awesome. we saw 200 women she's, she's awesome. the only one that was balls out funny she was awesome and I beautiful like, didn't we have like yeah. three different moms or something yep yeah every year yeah, we yeah. had a new mom because they kept getting new jobs yeah. jane jane lynch was on the show uh, uh octavia spencer i remember francis fisher francis uh, fisher was on the show well, she was like the the mom and uh i didn't think she was you know the world but she's an awesome person and for, like, great married. actor i remember once standing over with christopher case and francis fisher was on this this is a horrible thing to say <laughs> Francis Fisher was she's on the awesome, set. She's awesome, though. She, I know. I yeah, go, go, she, go say it. Okay, so it wasn't me who said it, right? I just right. enjoyed it, having been said. <laughs> Francis Fisher was on the set, and she's sitting in one of those, like, director's chairs, and, you know, her legs are up and just sort of, like, over the side. And we just sort of are sitting such that, like, like her crotch is just sort of facing. She's wearing pants and stuff, right? But her crotch is sort of facing right at us. And, and Chris <laughs> Case leans over to me and says, mumbles. Right now, Francis Fisher is flashing us the world's unfunniest beaver <laughs> shot. 
<laughs> and I just well, that's I wrong. Know. The world's unfunny. She cut that. She we want to like Patrick. No, yeah. Yeah. I didn't even say it. It's not me who said it. it. I I, I think it. it's terrible that Chris Case said that. Name. I, now I have <laughs> one. I have one for you that's actually much better than yours <laughs> and funnier. Okay, good. Is that when good. Cynthia got and pregnant? Cynthia got pregnant with twins, yeah. and so she and she was such a rock star. Like I, I loved working with Cynthia because she we got had, inventive hiding that too. We oh, got no, so you guys are great, but she was so used to doing soap operas yeah. and so able she could bring emotion on a beat whenever she needed to could drop into tears she was so cust uh, comfortable being in her own skin as a person well, i don't know if you knew this about her but she had this massive scar no, that went down that. from her sternum all the way below her belly button when she was a kid she went through some fucking hell in her life wow. she had to have massive surgeries and so what i really learned about cynthia was that she had this depth of a character and personality because unlike uh somebody who's just N luckily pretty uh -huh. and had that their whole life and sort yeah. of it, it, to the position born. Right. Cynthia had a real rough fucking childhood, yeah. went through some rough physical stuff, was belittled, was large, was, was, uh, was an outlier to society and was not included like a normal pretty girl is. And she so roamed she, the wastelands for many uh -huh. years. But, but you know exactly what I mean <laughs> is people were just naturally gorgeous Take that for granted. Yeah, she did yeah, not. She was also she was incredibly pretty, but also incredibly kind and also fun to hang out with. We were doing one scene was a Valentine's Day scene, and I like you guys are doing something, and I come out of a bathtub like an idiot because I'm just intruding, right? And she's wearing some lingerie, and I looked at her like my sister. I didn't look at her like a sex right. object, and I was like, "Damn, Cynthia, your 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 boobs are getting really big, man." She goes, "Zach." My boobs laugh at my old bra. <laughs> She's like, well, are you, going, are you having? Are you having back problems? She's like, it's rough. So that's how we talked. And when awesome. I had learned after she had given birth, I had read this thing like I do that Zach a, facts. A Zach fact: a woman who's who's nursing, if she hears the sound of a crying baby, will lactate. That to me is fucking hilarious. Is. So on stage, she's you're talking because I'm an asshole. So she's talking to two people like 25 feet away, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> which is a cross between a duck call and a baby. Yeah. And her <laughs> back is to me, and all I see is she's like this, and then she's like talking. She goes, <laughs> Zach, <laughs> and I'm just like running oh, for my. <laughs> yeah, you did that shit like all the time. So I was like, you were, you were like, it's like we had a job to do, and you fucked it up a lot. Thank you. Wow, I made it funny. Yeah. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> Very true. So, uh, um, when you are you still? So you're in the new season of Family Guy. Still in the new season of Family Guy. Are you are you back on now? Uh, when yeah, you guys I mean, start, we're always on and off and on and off. I'm on. Um, is it writer's room? Do you guys take scripts and write your like own? Is this like the plug your shit time? Is that, yeah, no, is that uh, yeah, because that, that's what they... See, that what family says? Guy really needs okay. a plug. Yeah. Hey, by the way, the show that's lasted for 17 years, make sure you see it. Let's yeah, start They're struggling. They're yeah, yeah, yeah. Cover. They're really... They have some issues. So, they got some chutzpah. So, so uh, I, there is something that I'm actually working on. So I'm just going... I saw a little that. announcement yesterday. Yeah, what What is a, that? So it's a comic uh, that I've been... Uh, I spent... Like she kills Five it. years it's called She Kills. I spent like five years researching it. I spent like three years getting it made. It's basically like... Um, like Lady Bird was like sort of this war between like a mom and her teenage daughter, right? Okay. So this is a little like Lady Bird, but in like the 1850s movie. Like, oh. uh, no, 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 it's a comic book, and uh, it's just uh, when everybody is like lynching each other all the time. It's set in Los Angeles in a year in which there was a murder every day. And there were only like a thousand people in LA at the time. So you do the math, like a third of the town what? was so dead. Wow. Every, by the by the end of the year, it's like in a LA of ten upon, million people. This is this is true. Like, that's what I was asking. They, you. Yeah, exactly. Like all of these people are real people. Like the story is fictional, but it's based on actual events, and these actual people actually murdered each other. Wow. And um and <clears throat> and just with just murder all around. And at that time, whenever the dead bodies would show up, it'd be like, all right, we'll get the Indians in here to like clean them up and put them in the ground. And so this is this woman who has this daughter who is growing older, who's like 13. Sort of the one thing she kind of has in her life is like, oh, I know I can control my kid. But like when a girl turns 13 or 14, she doesn't want to get controlled anymore. Yeah. And sort of like, all right, how's this sort of illiterate Indian woman sort of respond to like her daughter being like, Hey, fuck you, mom. And uh, yes, yeah, it's called She Kills. I'm not really great at pitching it yet, but I love it a lot. And I've uh, been working on it for so years. So it's a written, graphic written, novel? Graphic it's novel. a graphic novel, yeah. And wow, was, what an interesting idea. Yeah, but the whole, by the way, the West Coast at that time. Yeah, uh, that's crazy. what I mean. Yeah, yeah the 1852. Whole, yeah. yeah, I mean, the, 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 I wrote a, a, base, I wrote a, a series called Vigilant based on 
uh, the vigilantes in San Francisco that cleaned that cleaned up San Francisco. Yeah, they just went. Nah, they, yeah, that was just right. Pretty no, crazy it was just sort of like armed thugs. Like at this time, yeah, like, right? There was no sort of like official like police presence at all. So the way that like law would be enforced would just sort of be like people would get really drunk and go out and like let's find the nearest uh, you know Mac greaser to to kill. Yeah, and like. They call it deporting. A lot of people got deported in San Francisco, and they never heard from again. Yeah. A lot of judges died because they were so corrupt. There was like these people that had this weird. It was weird morality, but they, 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 they were like, "We need to clean this place up. How are we gonna do that? We're gonna do some fucked up shit." That's what yeah. <laughs> yeah. we're gonna do. Um, all right. So well, when does that get released? It's called so She Kills. It's, it's called a graphic she kills. novel. Yeah, there's a, a website called uh, www.shekillscomic.com, and we're gonna start rolling it out in March. I cannot wait. Uh, new exciting. comic book yeah. coming. She kills. Uh, uh, it sounds uh, interesting. I want. It's not, but That's not hilarious. It's pretty dark, right? It's sort of like it's the Indian genocide, but it's like the funny Indian genocide. You can't write that, and you shouldn't. It's like wouldn't. Deadwood meets and the I Pilgrims. Won't. But it, it honestly would be like sort of like ten issues of Titus in comic book form, with female protagonist. <laughs> See, that's that's how you pitch it. You, that, you just pitch. nailed it. You All got right. the pitch done. Okay, well, we'll, we'll go back, cut out the first part, and just sort of. Put uh, it. Guys, uh, thanks for watching and listening. I want to know what Zach's working on. Oh, well, Zach's, Zach's got a new movie coming out. Yeah, just tell me about the movie. Uh, uh, Patsy Lee? Yeah. Yeah, I'm still shooting that thing. Oh, are you Fuck still doing my life? Yeah. But wow, no, the again, thing is coming, both you guys need to work on well, pitching, by the way. So, <laughs> okay, so Patsy Lee and the Keeper of the Five Kingdoms is like the Goonies meets Big Trouble in Little China. Okay. So, it's a, a, a Chinese lead, Hong, a James Hong, who's 90 years old, the real James Hong from Big Trouble in Little China. I uh, the girl, the green eyes. Yeah. He talks like that. And a little girl, uh, she's like 17 years old, and they get pulled into this Chinese magical world. Wow. And then they have to find their way back and fight He's the bad puppets, guys. got puppets and Yeah, animals. we're actually shooting this big scene on the stages, because uh, I think I told you that. Yeah. Yeah. Got, right, so it's an animatronic tortoise puppet that's about two and a half, three feet high that takes about four people to operate and uses animatronics on the head so it can move its eyes, blink, and then move up and down. Wow! And then uh, we're using, we're building the, the a whole set for that to be in the magical forest uh -huh. and raised a, a steel deck flooring so that we can drop our cameras down, but also have our puppeteers lower. And then we're using a motion control rig uh, so that we can uh, pull people out and post very simply, even though we're doing uh, we're doing slides and tilts and pans and focus controls. So, so it's, it's one of those things that's what's so cool about it. Like when you're shooting a normal movie and, you know, Patrick and Chris uh, walk into the room and sit down. Right. That takes 30 seconds. Yeah. For the tortoise to set every part of that is almost like stop motion animation. You have to plan the angle and how far that goes to. And it's like tortoise walks over. That's half a day. Jesus. But it looks fucking cool. Like uh -huh. usually the movies so, that get to do this are do you like $30 this, million dollar movies. Do you like this kind of doing it? Or do you like I love doing it? I hate the I, I'm frustrated. This would make me fucking nuts. By this would make me the, nuts. I'm frustrated by the by the okay, so, so in filmmaking, and I don't know what it is for for animation, but you have the Iron Triangle: good, fast, cheap, right. and you only get two out of three. Two, yeah. So you're fighting for that, and we're going good and cheap, so it's not fast. Yeah. Meaning you sacrifice a lot to get that thing done. Yeah. You know, this is an this would cost anybody else eighty thousand dollars for this puppet. Yeah. It's costing me five because yeah. I've known this guy for fifteen years, and I go over and I work as a PA in a shop when I'm directing and producing a movie because he's my my huckleberry, right? Yeah. So you try and get those things done. Yes, it's worth it. When you see the footage, you go, "Oh my gosh!" But the process between and up to that, I want to rip out my fucking eyeballs. Ah. See, that's what that's, that's why I like funny because funny. There's an instant. Yeah, it's you, you know, on stage not getting even it just done. Me, even when we're, we're writing a show or whatever, there's a. I don't know, man. There's something about that would make I, I don't have that kind of mindset where I can go. Okay, uh, we're gonna spend 42 hours with a puppet that uh, uh, we're gonna no, get a second and a half out of it. Yeah, yeah nope. Oh, I'm out. his eyebrows <laughs> blinked wrong. So, uh, by the way, again. by the way, you're amazing. So, I, I'm an what, idiot, what's the movie? What's, and what's the movie called again? Patsy Lee and the Keepers of the Five Kingdoms. Patsy Lee and the Keeper of the Five Kingdoms. That's just called a cold. There right was there. a turtle, <laughs> and it was magical. Directed I've shown you some pictures of it. It's pretty it? awesome, actually. It's pretty. It's crazy for what you're. The money you're spending on it, what you're getting, <laughs> what you're getting is crazy. Ridiculous. Yeah. Ridiculous. Uh, I can't wait to see the comic book, man. Uh, by the way, yeah. if you want to go see my stuff, go to ChristopherTitus.com. Uh, Amazon Prime currently has Amerigeddon, my new special, and um, and then I've got a uh, special unit, uh, which is also on Amazon Prime. Do me a favor, Amerigeddon's getting doxxed by uh, the Trump supporters right now because they don't like nothing. Pisses off Trump supporters more than 600 people 
people laughing at jokes about Trump. <laughs> and I've done Why a few. They I did give a few. A shit? I went, they, they just do. You do not go after their Jesus. He is their fat, sweet potato Jesus. He really is. <laughs> so, uh, but it's really funny. Go see it. Please review it when you're done. Um, also, I will be in Tempe, Arizona this weekend uh, with Rachel. Uh, bombshells. Uh, she's got the flu right now. Please send out uh, thoughts and prayers to her because it's meaningless. Um, uh, which will be there Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday at Copper Blues this weekend. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. For myself, the lovely Bombshell Ray, Zach Ward. And the amazing Patrick <laughs> Megan. Um, thanks for being on, man. It's it was, good seeing you, buddy. It was so fun. Yeah. Yeah. And you're still funny as shit. Oh, you're good, nice. good to hang out with you. All right, guys. See you later. Peace.